Hey, Matt. Hey, Brian. Ready for a short one? Yeah, you got some cool stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen and then I got some stuff I can show you that's kind of interesting. Oh, there's our friend the frog. Um, so we talked a little bit before. I just had brought it up that uh, GPT Vision is now out, which means that Chat GPT can see things. So you can send it images or you can um, have it look at stuff and it, it understands what it sees. Um, I'm still geeking over your frog here. <laughs> that's under frog. Nice. Yep. Yep. Um, I love frogs and I love doing dogs both because I don't know, for some reason you can really push them pretty far and they're still recognizable as a frog or a dog. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. So um, I'm going to show you, let's start with this here. Can you believe this? Okay. So this is a live soccer game that they are showing chat GPT. And as the soccer game is being played, it's giving play by play in real time as it sees what's happening. Can you believe this? He's taken on the whole defense. He's a one man show, ladies and gentlemen. He shoots. Goal! Messy, messy, messy. Unbelievable. What a goal. What a goal. Glorious. Absolutely glorious. The stadium explodes in joy. This is football magic at its finest. So that voice is AI. That voice is AI, but not only is it AI, it's AI that is in real time explaining what's happening in the soccer game as it sees it. And and it knows who Messi is because it's talking about Messi. Like, and like it knows, when... yeah, and it knows what the different positions in soccer are and what the strategies are and what that, this is what going when on. we speak on sunday keep going because i want to see this guy in green if you if you don't mind oh yeah unbelievable what a goal what a goal glorious absolutely glorious the stadium explodes in joy this is football magic at its finest now is this world of warcraft i don't know what game that is but it looks like if, if it's not that it's a similar game um but yeah, as ChatGPT is looking at it, it knows what the game is. It knows what the players are and describing what's happening as it sees it. And we'll look to extend their lead as the next objective comes up. And here we are in a tension-filled moment. T1 holding a slight gold lead over LNG as the vision game intensifies around the dragon pit. T1's positioning is crucial here as they look to establish dominance and secure the next objective. Can LNG find a pick or will T1 extend their lead? The next move could be pivotal. And as the action unfolds on the top lane, we see LNG's Zeka cautiously holding back, aware of T1's Zeus, who has just disappeared into that river brush. The vision game is critical here, with neither wanting to overstep and risk a gank with the dragon time. Okay. Um, which is pretty phenomenal. And no, see, this... this the previous thing both of them actually yeah until you see it and really like grasp it in that way for instance when we have our we're going to have an a uh, intentional conversation for creatives about ai this sunday come on by um well maybe we can put that in the yeah yeah i'll put that in the description the thank you brian but the thing is, is like when I describe this to my creative friends, all the things that we've learned just over the past six weeks, I get a lot of, you know, like, ah, it's going to be okay. Don't worry so much. And I'm like, I don't know that I'm worrying so much. I think I'm just like being aware, aware of where this thing, becoming a more aware of where this thing was, not even right now, because it's zooming right past every time we take a look. It's It's someplace else two hours later. So it's going to be interesting to show things of this. Like, are, do you plan on showing this one too on Sunday? Yeah, I'll show this one and I'll show some of the other, you know, current state of various, various systems. Um, I have some more. Please. Other new stuff. 
Um, let's see. Let's okay. This one's kind of interesting. Uh, go ahead and share my screen here. Hey, Brian. Yes. Could you hold on one second? Sure. Okay. So, um, like we were talking about, Chat GPT can now see. Um, and so, you know, when we've played around and sh we've shown Mid Journey and Dolly, where you can type in whatever you want and it makes, you know, makes an image of whatever you're asking for, illustration, painting, whatever. Um, now, since it can see, somebody took that and uh, they just hooked it up to their webcam and then they typed in the style of illustration that they wanted. And then uh, in real time, well, not real time, but every uh, second or so, it generates a new image based on what it sees in your webcam in the style of what you typed in. And you can see there, he just has a little cutout of a cat and it just turned that into a cat. Um, wow. So, you oh, know- you, as, show, you have to show this on Sunday too. This is- Yeah. Amazing. So in, you know, just live from his webcam, it's it's generating these images. And, you know, it doesn't just kind of thinking about that going forward it's going to be able to basically convert whatever live video of you is going on into whatever you want um, Amazing. as it happens and the, I mean, you could use it to make movies you could make it use it to pretend to be somebody else you could who knows but um yeah you could look like a, you know, you're a moving Leonardo da Vinci painting or a Matt Faulkner illustration. Mm -hmm. um, Will, um, so. the fact that it's now, see, that that's one thing too, is like, it's interpreting, it's not just commenting on what it's seeing, which is a complex thing in and of itself, because it has to have a personal response to what, or <laughs> not personal, it has to have an informed response yes. to what it's seeing. So yeah. when it sees people playing soccer, I could see it, you know, um, just interpreting that game in the complex understanding of a soccer game, right? Yep. But in addition to that, it it understood who Messi was and spoke about Messi in a way that was appropriate for somebody of his skill level you know right. i think it went like messy 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 ah, or something you know like who taught it to do that that's amazing yeah yeah well um uh, since it can you know it's trained on you know what's on the internet and not just text but it's probably watched a lot of soccer games mm -hmm. so um all right i got one more and uh, this is pretty wild too. Um, so I don't, are you familiar with what motion capture is? Yes. Okay. So it's a, it's, it usually involves um, putting like sensors and dots on your face and on your body or wearing a suit or. Yeah. The quintessential uh, motion capture is Gollum. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So this is, uh, this is, share my screen this is ai doing it instead so um turn the sound off on this so uh instead of having a, a whole bodysuit and everything it's just gonna it just looks at the video and then translates that into controlling the character even i mean it's tracking his eyebrows with 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 without any equipment and then wow. you can go in and you can say okay but i want you know you know you can 
calibrate it to whatever your neutral face is, and then you can raise your eyebrows and it'll tag that as that's as high as you want them to go. And then you can actually go in and, and accentuate them. And so raise them even higher than you actually raise them. And then it will, whenever oh you God. raise yours, it'll make that one go way high. Um, I mean, it, look, it's, it, it's, yeah, you've got the folds in the neck. Um, well, the guy's got some serious control over his eyebrows too. He does. They picked a good, a good one for that. But yeah, I mean, and it's 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 all exaggerated in the character too, which which <laughs> that's the neck. design of it. Um, but yeah, say goodbye to traditional motion capture. Well. So now, I mean, if you want to do the tedious work of designing a character and then plug this into this application, then you can uh, animate it as per the faces that you make. Right. Uh, but why even design your own character? Just tell AI what you want and then, you know, use your own face. And yeah. so, I mean, there are, again, there are people who are going to find this Again, it's not really that there are people who find it satisfying. If people want to do this this way, cool. And for me, it's not even like people are going to lose jobs. That's a given. Yeah. And we've talked about that before. How many new technologies have wasted jobs over, you know, like and people had to learn new things? To me, it's what's being lost in cre being creative. If this starts to look like this is actually how people learn how to do eye-hand coordination to draw a character, and this is what it's um, supplementing it, it's not that it's a loss of um, like a skill set. To me, it's the loss of what's every, like, is this the next step for character development? Well, yeah. And is it is this the, the new process of creativity overall? That's that's you know the general question, you know. Yeah. And there to me, no, it's not. It's a computer game. Cool. So I can turn on a computer and have it mimic my facial muscles over a character I either designed or it designed. That's not impressive to me. And I know I'm going to sound like a, whatever it sounds like. It's just <laughs> I'm really this is the thing that's concerning to me is that it is rewriting what it is to be creative. Yes. And how many people are going to buy it? That's the, that's, that's, that's what I see as the big difference with this over everything else. Um, it's, it is replacing that whole history, historical process of human beings creating things. Um, it's not just like a new way to make stuff. It is, it is the process um and then it's and then it's going to be interesting when it you know when it's tied into like the feedback loop kind of a thing of the way social media you know caters to you and what you want and and kind of continuously gives you a dopamine hit so you're going to keep using it and using it and using it um yeah i don't know i don't know where this is going so, I mean, it's just good to keep talking about it. And I mean, that's all, honestly, what, like as we've said before, we're not stopping this train. This is not going to go back into the station. But the fact of the matter is, is that so many people aren't aware of, um, you could also just say, well, I mean, so what? So they're, you know, if they were, they were developing um, at the comparison between a desktop computer and a laptop really revolutionary to be able to carry a computer around amazing this is so far beyond that transformation and when people think of it though you know when i talk to people about it they're kind of like mm, well i mean there's always going to be a human component i i i agree with it but i think that this is going to be like a wave that just washes over everything and it's gonna it's gonna be like extinct animals uh in the in the past oops there's no more killer whales oh well 
same kind of thing. You know, it, it's that important. Um, I also, I shared with you the article, I don't know if I should bring it up, but just to bring up further this idea, there is a, was a, a, a talk amongst publishing um, giants or people who in the know uh, recently, and they were talking about the effect of AI on um, publishing. Mm -hmm. And they, they talked about um, uh, the issue of, uh, uh, I forget, I'm forgetting the publishing terms, but how, how it could affect um, the way people could make money as an author or an illustrator. But one thing that they didn't bring up, which was kind of fascinating to me, and you brought it up too, was they didn't talk at all about how AI is going to flood the market with AI created material. And, and when I mentioned that on their post, there was no conversation about it, hmm. which to me, that's the main thing is that AI is not just going to um, change the way publishing is done. It's going to stop publishing as it is with and for human beings. And what I also found was interesting too, was that the, um, the higher up people, the higher up the ladder they were, were very interested in how AI, the, the quote was, this is a, an exciting day for publishing. Well, maybe for you, mm -hmm. you're not going to be affected. Right. You're going to just run new machines and they're going to replace human beings. I, th I think it's also a little, when it, when I look, when I kind of imagine further out, I think it could affect them though, because well, if, if AI is, I mean, other than the people who are making the AI stuff if it's actually generating the stuff for people on the fly whatever they want what do you need a publisher for exactly so i mean if they thought that they took a hit when people started to when amazon started to do you know print on demand you submit a story and you don't need to have an editor or an art director and you design your own little book on the amazon app and then everybody buys it without the middleman of the publisher they did take a hit with that but this is so far beyond that, unless they're like the oil drilling companies that buy out all the solar panel com the companies. So now they're going to be running all of the solar panel development in the same way that the publishers could just um, invest in AI. Mm -hmm. And oh, well, this is one of the things too, Brian. I mean, I think we've talked about this before. Um, it sounds like I'm a little bit like Chicken Little. The sky is falling. Uh, combined with um, the emperor's new clothes, you know, um, and and I have to be careful how much I bring this up in front of other people because we've done a lot of talking about it and I'm learning a lot. And and it is tedious for people. People don't really want to hear about this. Have you found that happening? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. I, I I've said I I feel a little bit like a canary in a coal mine. Um, and yeah, and I'm not getting. People aren't paying attention. Um, I, I also think that the the whole the hit that the publishers took from self publishing. Th this is going to be much bigger, much bigger. Not only because of it can create this stuff on the fly as much as you want, um, but as we've seen. You know, people people will tend to they'll look at this stuff and they'll say they'll look at the writing that ChatGPT does and they'll say, well, you know, it has no soul or it's just not that great or et cetera. Um, but the rate at which it's getting better is incredible. Oh, yeah. The art stuff. Uh, I'm sorry, but there's some of that stuff. No one could. I don't think people could tell whether or not it was AI. Oh, or not. not at all. I'm, I mean, um, we, the writing we is going to be that. the same way. And if you look at a lot of self-published authors them competing i think they're going to get hit because oh yeah chat gpt is going to know knows you know the ai is going to know how to write better than a, a novice human being so it's, the, the it's whole gonna thing at least I... know all all the rules and all the cliches and all that yeah. and um yeah well i mean the, the one of the things too is that um 
I keep, I've heard a number of times, well, there's always going to be a need for the human element. And this is just another tool. And we've said this any number of times. You know, when the when the big wave comes over, yes, some people are going to be able to ride it out. But how many people get wiped out? Mm -hmm. And just God help you if you're one of the ones that got nixed by this transformation, which this thing is not a tool. A tool is a human being using a tool to make something. This is a thing that is making the thing without the human beings for human beings who will buy it and not care about the human beings who have been replaced by this thing that's not a tool. Right. And at what point does it start using us? Or is so, I mean, I don't think it's, I know that we, you know, like I started to say recently, is this a scary thing, Brian? Are you sure? <laughs> um, I guess we could also say, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily have to go in the way that I know that I keep seeing it. I'm, I mean, I'm a storyteller. This is following some paradigms for um, a scary situation, mm -hmm. uh, storytelling wise. But it doesn't have to go that way. Maybe something else is going to happen. But what I'm seeing, too, is like the patterns of greed and self-aggrandizement of those at the upper levels and actually the people who purchase materials. Um, certainly the people at the upper levels, we're always talking about, you know, the 2 percent and who are they and they get away with all of these uh, uh, scams against the rest of humanity. But also I'm seeing it as, um, I mean, and you tell me, um, if we're talking about movies, the motion capture, it's one of the things that I, I think that they've been negotiating as actors with um, the uh, the powers that be in, in uh, Hollywood is that in so many contracts, they have to have a, a, a motion capture of their body, which can be used in perpetuity. So they don't need the actors anymore not with these applications, right? And so when that starts to become prevalent, how many more movies with human beings are going to be made? Yes, there's always going to be a, a part of the populace that wants to see movies with real people in them, but what scale of the industry of people who buy it, I know I'm doing a lot of talking here, but uh, this is, uh, I'll finish with, how many people are going to say, I really don't care? or is it going to be where you aren't going to be able to tell anyway? Yeah. So, I mean, if I can't tell, and let's say I'm just a guy coming home from a job, you know, is going to have my uh, pizza and a, and a beer. And do I want to get the movie that came out three years ago? That's a funny, uh, whatever, buddy movie. That's also an adventure. Or do I want to call up the movie making company and say, all right, here's what I want. And they'll have it for me in, in seven minutes for the same price. Right. And they'll create a movie for me in that shorter period of time. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah, like we've said before, I do think it'll, it, it has the potential to increase interest in live theater um, where you're actually going and you know, it's a real person and you know, that whole experience. Um but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. The other thing is like comp I've been thinking about competition. So with companies, so competition is usually good because companies compete, brings the price down and, and stokes innovation. Um, however, with the AI stuff where a company might normally hold back and slow down or wait on features or have something they've developed but not release it because they don't know what effect it's going to have on everything if their competitors releasing it then they have to then they, then they do it According so they might hold on to something but then a competitor's like oh hey they haven't done all right we're releasing ours that does this and then they have to put theirs out there so uh and then according to the capitalist marketing right, model right right yep yep so um it's just good to keep talking about this it may it, it's not going to play out the way you and i expect it to um we may all have jobs doing exactly what we want to do 20 years from now i don't know yeah um but at the same time in the, in the meantime 
this is what we're showing actually is pointing at um, these tools or not tools are capable of doing all of the jobs, at least in the creative industry, every single one of them. It doesn't matter which part of the industry you're talking about, filmmaking, animation, game design, writers of books, illustrators of books, you don't need anybody. Yeah. So why would the people who have the money who can get this app to do it for a fraction of the cost want to spend it on human beings? Yeah. In the interim, maybe it's all going to change 50 years from now. There'll be a big revolution and everybody will be like, oh my God, we don't want machines doing everything for us. But in the interim, what does everybody else do? I've seen already with um, some sci-fi shows and things where uh, because the AI is now progressing so quickly, it's hard to keep up with the sci-fi aspect because the AI has already surpassed the what would be in the sci sci-fi stuff. So they'll they'll come up with like uh, story devices where you know it's all it's been outlawed. So in the future, that's why you don't see all the AI stuff <laughs> happening because it was outlawed. Um, maybe it will be, I don't know, but. All right, well, fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back to, back to painting and drawing. And you got your uh, book reveal, book release. Yeah, I got a book, uh, book release uh, on Friday at the local library here in Huntington. Yay. Uh, so we're having a big, shindig at the library i'm going to do a reading are there going to be finger foods brian uh i believe there's going to be some sort of yes some sort of awesome yeah do you know what we had at the uh at the my gallery show for the food i don't wait dogs in a blanket wow you're good yeah we're well, good that, would, that was there that those was were there. there well of course they that were was there yep that and uh large and uh extravagant jello molds <laughs> yeah. are, is something of that nature planned because i mean these are all selling points so you got to let people know i mean oh yeah yeah molds. yeah i'm not sure what the library uh, the library is doing something i'll have to go look it up they're doing they're definitely doing something fun and uh themed for this though so beautiful yeah Yep. All right, so this thing on Sunday, how do you think, how long do you think it's going to last, you know, the conversation that we have with whoever shows up? You're all invited. I, I, I set it to go for up to two hours. So okay. it could go an hour, it could go a little longer, I don't know. And we're not going to try to steer it into the, I'm not going to try to steer it, and I know, I know Brian isn't either. We're just going to present information. A lot of it's very exciting, a lot of it's scary, and we may point out scary things but we're not going to like right we're not going to insist that we go down the scary path no no and uh, you know i mean and, and a lot of the stuff is is exciting and interesting and uh yeah we'll see we'll see i think we're going to get a, a a pretty good range of people who are familiar with it who are unfamiliar with it who hate it who love it who aren't sure yet we'll see is there a li limit on the number that can be on your zoom cast uh it's like 45 or 75 yeah uh, i'm not sure what they put the limit at I'm, I'm i doubt we'll get i i mean i've been on ones that were you know that had 50 60 70 people on them and i doubt we'll have that many well i'm assuming we're gonna have that many oh so well okay we'll have to raise the limit well who i don't know who we talked to about that but yeah yeah i'm sure they'll listen to us and what's the name of the book that's coming out on friday the Big Wig Parade. Awesome. Who's the publisher? Uh, it's uh, the publisher is Powerhouse Kids. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you what do you think? Are we done, or are we going to do more? I think so. I think so. Yep. I'm going to say goodbye. All right. Adios. <laughs>